This negotiation is not the art of fantasy or the art of uh, the ideal. It's the art of the possible, which is verifiable and clear in its capacity to be able to make Israel and the region safer. The fact is that Iran's ability to break out, George, will expand under this program. Therefore, Israel will be safer, the region will be safer. All right, there you go. Uh, maybe it uh, was a story, bedtime story time or something for John Kerry or fantasy time. I don't know. Uh, joining us right now is our good friend John Bolton, a former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Hello, Mr. Ambassador. Hi, Steve. How are you? Glad good, to be good. With. Glad to have you, as always. Um, okay, so uh, <laughs> your, your reaction to what uh, John Kerry uh, had to say with regard to the deal that was struck. Well, look, uh, it is a very bad deal. That That is the fact. It's uh, poorly negotiated, poorly worded. It's filled with loopholes. But most importantly of all, uh, this is a deal which effectively gives Iran the two basic objectives that it sought going into these negotiations. Number one, protect its nuclear weapons program. And number two, get some relief from the economic sanctions. Iran has achieved its objectives uh, I don't know what the Obama administration's objectives were, uh, but I don't think they achieved what they sought. And I think this leaves the region more dangerous, more vulnerable to Iran, uh, and leaves the United States in a far worse position in terms of protecting our friends and allies. Well, when it comes to our friends and allies, uh, what position does it leave them in? And, of course, uh, the media has portrayed it as, uh, you know, Israel uh, being uh, objectionable to it and, and, uh, and having the most to say and threatening action and uh, being upset that they, they neglect to mention that Saudi Arabia is right up there and so are other Gulf state members. But having said that, um, is it possible for Israel to, to still go ahead and take action within this six-month period? Or do you think that effectively the president has tied their hands? Well, I think that's what Obama wanted to do. You know, I think we've discussed this before, but I believe that Obama fears an Israeli military strike against Iran's program more than he fears an Iranian nuclear weapon. Uh, he believes that Iran can be contained and deterred. I think that's delusional. I think the Ayatollahs have a very different approach to the world than the Soviets did during the Cold War. And in any event, of course, it doesn't stop with Iran. The Saudis, the Egyptians, the Turks, and others will get nuclear weapons, which means not only will Israel be more vulnerable, but so will everybody else in the Middle East, and so will everybody else in the world – uh, who might be the target of a terrorist group that could get its hands on uh, one of these weapons. The fact is, uh, I do believe that Obama felt that this deal would give him more leverage over Israel, uh, but I think it simply highlights even more the critical decision Israel has to make. There's no good time for Israel to strike the Iranian program in terms of global opinion. It's always going to be negative. The only question is, is it a bad time or a worse time? So from Israel's point of view of its legitimate right to self-defense, uh, it has to judge when it can't wait any longer. And I don't think it has much time. I, I would have advised, I did advise publicly Israel to strike long before the present time. And every day that goes by just makes Israel more vulnerable. Mr. Ambassador, if you were in there as Secretary of State, um, of course, you know, you never would have agreed to the, these terms. But wouldn't you, from a position of strength, that the United States is, uh, uh, I, I would imagine, in uh, entering these talks, wouldn't you have demanded some kind of goodwill gesture at the very least, knowing that you're going to have a, a, well, you wouldn't take the lousy deal, but let, let's put yourself in Kerry's place or Obama's place. You know the deal's going to stink. You know that even your own party's going to reject it and not want it, and everybody except the Ayatollahs and you are going to hate it. Uh, so so why not insist that, hey, just give us, give us the release of one or two of the three people you're holding. Give us the pastor. Give us somebody. Do something. Something. Nothing. We got nothing. Yeah. Look, if the program that Iran has been pursuing for 25 years were truly peaceful, it would be incredibly easy for Iran to demonstrate that, to, to do exactly as you suggest, purely as a goodwill humanitarian gesture, release these prisoners who never should have been imprisoned to begin with. But that's not the nature of Iran's program. It has always been a military program. <clears throat> and, you know, from Kerry's point of view, the best diplomat is the diplomat that has a strong sense of American power at his back. And if John Kerry had gone into those negotiations with the Ayatollahs in Tehran, 
believing that there truly was a credible threat of American military force against the program, he could have cut a much better deal. But the fact is, neither the Iranians, nor the Israelis, nor the Saudis, nor anybody else believes Obama when he says all options are on the table. And that, even if Kerry were inclined to try and cut a tough deal, uh, I don't think even Mother Teresa could have negotiated <laughs> that, given given how weak Obama's position is and how well the Iranians understand that. Unfair to ask you this. We have much less than a minute. What happens in six months, in your view? Well, I think the Iranians will undercut this agreement. I think they have broken the psychological momentum of the economic sanctions. I think they are much more clearly on a path to nuclear weapons. So if I had to predict the most likely outcome, I'd say they're going to be six months closer. The only wild card here, the only thing that stands in the way of Iran getting deliverable nuclear weapons at a time of their choosing is the possibility of an Israeli military strike, and that's in the hands entirely of the Israeli government at this point. Mr. Ambassador, thank you, and have a great Thanksgiving, sir. A good Thanksgiving to you, too. Thanks again. Thank for you. Having. That's Ambassador John Bolton, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Malzberg Show. All right.